Hello and welcome to another episode of 24 Hour Production People with me, your host, Gandalf. Let us go. Today I'm planning on showing you how to use a gimbal to create a motion time lapse. As previously you would have had to use a, a motion control rig, like a tripod head that's motorized in order to get these sweeping images in the frame to create a smooth but slow time lapse. With this you can achieve the same thing simply by using an app and Bluetooth. Yeah, by using the app on Bluetooth you can create very similar results. It's not quite perfect, but there's nothing a little bit of manipulation in post can't fix. We have the Canon 5D Mark III with Magic Lantern booted up on it. And for this, you can either choose to use the intervalometer setting here, or what I prefer to use for speed is the raw video setting. So if we put it into video now and take it to frames per second override, this is what gives you almost like a time-lapse ability. And you have here, optimized for low light. This is what gives you more light into the frame as if you were shooting pictures, see that there? So it's a similar effect to if you shoot a time-lapse photo and you get one exposure, a one second exposure, only it's a video so you can see everything in real time and there's no, fuck off, and there's no gaps in between the frames. What you usually get if you're using the shutter inside and the intervalometer. Let me just get this set up and I'll show you some stuff. So I take the, take the ISO on the camera down to 100 and then we crank up the variable ND filter on the front here, just so we can restrict the amount of light that comes into the camera. And see it's still overexposed. So you have to put it up to say F F16. So there's very little light coming to the camera at this point in time. Let's get it in focus. So it should be in focus now. So I'd say the exposure there is pretty accurate. You've got the histogram with Magic Lantern here in the corner so you can see exactly whether things are over or underexposed. And that looks good. So I'm gonna power up the gimbal. There it goes. If I go into the app now, I powered up the gimbal. And this, currently when it's powered up, is in follow mode, which isn't really what you want. You want to click the mode button once, you get full control over the joystick, and this is where you can choose your shots. So, going into the Z Play app, so going into the app, connecting to the crane via Bluetooth. See, it's found it immediately there. You've got the choice between photos and videos. You want it to be in video, that's quite important. And now, you have this here over on the right hand side and this is the feature that gets you into the moving time lapse they call it. So if you hit that then you've got the option to move around the joystick to the framing that you want. Just try something random here so I'm just going to press plus to lock it in for that one setting and now I'm going to put the next setting for the next area that it's looking at it's over here. That'll do. Press plus again, and that gives you your A and B points. And if you choose to do more points, so you could say take it over here or have it arcing all around the place, you could do that. But this gives you a nice straight shot in between point A and point B. If you take it through to the next, you've got the option of time interval. To be honest, I'm not sure what difference that makes, but I've always kept it as low as possible, just so I, I'm presuming it gives you the smoothest movements you can and then duration is the amount of time that it takes to get from point A to point B. So typically I'd use five minutes because five minutes gives you roughly about 10 seconds to shoot in one frame a second. With this on now, I'm going to hit the record button on the camera because it takes a little while here for it to boot up. So once that's going there, then press start and it automatically swings around to get you into the point A flowing position and then should do a slow move to find point B. But it helps to leave the screen on as opposed to locking your phone, I think, because otherwise it can switch off the whole process and then you'll have to start again. Yeah, one of the good things about doing your, all your time lapses with raw video as opposed to the intervalometer and the photos is that it will give you the file immediately in which you can look at it in camera and see exactly how the whole thing turned out as opposed to having to use the dial and flick through every image to see whether they look good or not. But yeah. It seems to have stopped, so we can stop it there. Unless you want to leave it for a few seconds to run over at the end, it's entirely up to you. That's that done. Should we take it somewhere else and try it somewhere else? Yeah, yeah. Sounds like a barrel of laughs. So let's take this show on the road. Oh! 
Almost lost it. Oh, it's one of my dragon friends. Let's go hang out with him. Ooh, epic. Turn this bastard on. So back into the app and I'm setting my moving time lapse points again. So this one's good. And I'm gonna put it over here somewhere. Isaac, love the Isaac in shot as well. So that looks good. Take it through to next. And let's make this five minutes again. So, yep. All right, that's one more. Let's go get a few more and we'll take it back to the edit suite. It's not an edit suite, is it? It's an office. I lied. If you're one of these run and gun, solo shooter type people, then yeah, I highly recommend it. Start, and away it goes. Magic. done. Let's take it back to the office, get on the computer, go through the, the images and see if we've made some good time lapses. Let's do it. All right, so now we're back in the office. Let's see what we got. Do you want to get involved? So once you've got all your DNGs as, as folders, the DNGs inside, you take it through to After Effects. You select the first file there, import as camera or sequence, bring it in, and you can make your amendments or the changes to the raw file. <coughs> so bring the highlights down, bring the shadows up, put that on auto, and it gives you a nicer looking image. So. 5100 temperature, plus 18 on the tin. Looks good. And bring the exposure up because when you shoot with Mag Magic Lantern Raw, the image that you see in the camera is always a little bit darker once you get it out of the camera. Um, let's get some contrast as well. Okay. And once that's in there, you can drag it, providing you've got your settings, your import settings. Preferences, import, and the sequence footage is at 25 frames per second. Then you can drag this video file into the composition window and it will set you up perfectly, hopefully. And we'll play that and see how it came out. Actually, looks quite smooth. I'd like to have that perfect, so what you can do is stick warp stabilizer on it. Preserve the scale. See, so it helps to have a really fast neon computer for these things. So you try and do it with one of these things, MacBook Pro, the graphics card isn't very good, and you'll be there forever. What happens if um, you don't have the blue neon, but you have the same computer? Um, you know how like some cars have stripes on them? Yeah. And that makes them go faster? Is it the same thing? It's the same principle, yeah. Oh, it's done. Oh, he's done It's done. Done. Look at that. And it's pretty smooth. Happy with that, young Isaac? I am happy with that. Happy? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so now we gotta do that for the rest of them. Ready to be exported and you're done. Check it out. <laughs> 